to introduce our next panelist, Stella Mendez, who received her Bachelor of Science in Professional Studies from Hofstra University. Stella is a Managing Director at FTI Consulting. She has more than 25 years of diverse bank industry experience as a leader in FTI's consulting bank regulation and governance practice. Since joining FTI, Stella has led numerous Bank Secrecy Act and anti-money laundering reviews for banks, money service businesses, and other financial service providers. Stella consults with clients on Bank Secrecy Act and anti-money laundering best practices and performs risk assessments and conducts anti-money laundering investigations as part of government investigations. She also provides advisory services on regulatory response, anti-money laundering training to banks and other financial services firms, and gives webinars on regulatory compliance best practices. Prior to joining FTI, Stella served as President and Chief Operating Officer for First National Bank of New York and was a former Executive Vice President and Chief Retail Officer at Madison National Bank. Stella is a certified anti-money laundering specialist and is active in numerous professional organizations, including Hofstra Women in Leadership, New York Bankers Association, the American Bankers Association, and the Cancer Center for Kids. She's also a board member at the Education and Assistance Corporation. It's my pleasure to introduce Stella Mendez. Thank you, Dr. Berliner. Last time I saw you, you were retiring. I'm not really sure what happened. Um, <laughs> I think you told me that Stu called, and that's, that's what happens, right? Um, so I thank you for having me here today. Um, like Catherine, I don't ever say no when Hofstra calls, and the reason is that um, they're a big reason of why I'm, I am who I am today. I was a non-traditional student. I was already in business, uh, relatively successful. Um, but I decided to go back and get my degree because I felt that's something I always wanted to do. And a lot of people thought, you know, at this point, why would you do that? And it was the best decision I ever made because um, it, it teaches you to be confident in the, in the world that you know. And it teaches you about other people's experiences in the business world. And I think that you can't say enough about the experience that you get in being in a business school that gives you the opportunity to meet with other people, meet with other types of businesses, and stretch yourself to a point where you thought you couldn't. Um, and that's invaluable. Um, the struggle for me coming here today was that I was only allowed 10 minutes to speak, and I don't think I can do anything in 10 minutes, but I'm gonna try. Um, and thinking about the business uh, education in the next 50 years, some of the things that come to mind, mostly because of the field that I'm in, um, is ethics, um, Credentials, practical experience. So practical experience, and, and um, Professor Rabinowitz mentioned this earlier, that you know they try and teach the students about the world, and they offer them these opportunities to be part of the, the entrepreneur program and to get real life experience. And that's that you don't get all the time, and that's so important. When I meet with potential uh, employees that are trying to get into the business world, you know I look at a few things. I look at their credentials really important, getting a really solid education for a school that has a, one of the top 10 business programs is important. You know, what kind of practical experience do you have? Have you gone on internships? Have you taken opportunity of the different programs and clubs that a, a university provides? I look at all those things because I think it's important that I employ, and, and most companies will look at this, I don't employ just someone who's the smartest person in the class, but someone who's flexible and nimble and understands how the world works. Because in, in your business, whether it's a local business or an international business, you have to understand how other people um, think about things, how they make decisions, and how that's gonna impact you. And if you don't, if you're not flexible and wanting to learn about the world, um, then you're, you're at a loss. And, and that, I think, stunts what, what, I, what I look for. And I don't just look for an employee, I look for leaders. So how do we in business produce leaders? Um, and then it goes to ethics, which, you know, in the last uh, few years, or since 2008 with the big bank collapse, there's been a, a big focus on um, ethical leadership. And I think that's important because it's not, how do you step yourself up and say, I'm not going to be victim to that. I'm not going to fall to the greed. I'm going to step above and be a leader to people that rely on me, not just the employees, but, but the communities, the, the, 
res the areas that you live in, the companies that you do work for. Um, and I think that the universities provide that more and more, and they expand the opportunity for you to realize that you know being an ethical leader is important, and knowing how to make change and not be afraid to be the change that you, that needs to be done in the business world today. And the practical experience, you know, when I was in business, uh, it was very much about you know being doing your job and doing your job well and, and getting to the next level and then you know doing that job well and getting to the next level. That's that's changed now. It's very much about can you work with a team? Can you lead a team? And it's not individual anymore. It's about being collaborative. And it's about being um, being able to manage multiple teams. A lot of times global. Um, FTI that I work for is uh, 4,400 employees with 26 offices throughout the world. So it's easy to sit in your office and say, well, you know, I'm in the US and everyone has to come to me. It doesn't work like that. You have to be able to, you know, reach across the line and, and, and work well with someone that you wouldn't have otherwise worked with. And that takes, um, you know, some sort of inner strength to kind of push yourself out of where you've been. And that's what I think the university, that's what Hofstra did for me. It made me confident in, in what I knew and what I could do and, and how I could help people in the future, whether it's you know students that I would speak with or, or other business leaders. You know, being able to, to collaborate, collaborate on a project and get something done is rewarding and it's something that needs to happen. And the other thing that, that I feel has changed um, drastically since I've been in school and that I think we'll continue to see, there are a lot more women in business. There are a lot more minorities in business. And years ago, I don't think that you know um, business programs really accounted for that. And so I think Hofstra has done a great job with trying to stay ahead of, of the curve by being innovative, by offering different programs, by providing different um, efforts for different things. You know, They have the Women in Leadership Program that I'm part of that spends a lot of time reaching out to alumni to help the women in Hofstra today and giving them kind of some advice on how to get to the next level. And I think that's important because, you know, it's, it's, you sit in a classroom and you learn all the principles of business and all that stuff is important and you need to know that. But it's the rest of it that rounds you as a person that makes you a good business leader. You know, Catherine talked about um, U.S. CEOs with the, with, keeps them up at night. Um, and the answer was always the same for me. It was always talent and retaining talent. And it's not just about the grades you got or how well you work you know, on the project. It's about how willing are you to think outside of the box. And education, a business education now is really important. There's more demand for business people now than ever. But it, you have to be the right kind of business person to get where you want to get. The competition is tough. And being able to stand on your own and be confident in yourself and knowing what you know and being able to stand up to someone who may not be doing the right thing, that what stands, that's what stands you apart from everybody else. And I think that um, Hofstra, I've seen a lot of change uh, since I've been here. I expect to see a lot of change going forward. And I think that's the only way that you ever get to the next level is by continuing to grow, whether it's personally or professionally. And so an education and business has to be the same thing. It has to constantly be evolving. It has to be innovative. It has to stay ahead of the curve for you to get the right talent and develop the right people. And it's not about you know getting a student a credential, it's about creating leaders. Leaders that can be trusted and will make a difference and will come back and continue to impart some of their experience into the business world and hopefully lead people in, into the, the new century where you know more and more you see people on, you know, technology is a big part of, of, of the university, of, of any program. And so to be part of a growing culture like that and staying involved, you know, if I could give advice to the students in the room, you know, participate in networking events. It's so important. It never, you, you can never take for granted someone you met in this room today could potentially get you the best job of your career, you know, two years from now, three years from now, five years from now. So the relationships that you build while you're in a program like this are invaluable. So stay in touch with the people that you met, whether it's your professors, whether it's you know fellow students, whether it's just someone that, that is on campus one day. Networking is really important. Take advantage of that. Take advantage of any learning opportunities that you have to come back. Take advantage of meetings like this. You never know, you know someone here on the panel 
may be looking for someone just like you, and you're not going to know that if you don't take advantage of that. So nurture the relationships that you build in school. Nurture the relationships that you build in your jobs. Whether it's a good experience or bad, they're all learning lessons, and you should take them with you and stay in touch with people that you could potentially help down the road or could help you down the road. And I think, is that my 10 minutes? Yeah, she's telling me my time's up, so <laughs> I'm going to stay out. Thank you very much for having me. It's been my pleasure.